reading the thing with you. Is that okay for you? So yeah. Yeah. Um. Wow, I like the title. It said the very apostle, the first apostle of peace, at any price. This is a continuation on the story of Genesis about the Abraham by Alexander McLaren. Uh, in his book called the Expositions on the Holy Scriptures. And uh, I'm gonna read the scripture here. So, then Isaac saw in that land, and received in the same year, in a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. And the man was great, went forward to grow, until he became very great. For he had the possession of flocks, and the possession of herds, and the great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had did in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistine had to stop them to fill them with the earth. And Abimelech said to unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines stopped them after the death of Abraham, and they called their names after the names by which he the father called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of spring water. And the herdsman of Geran did destroy with Isaac's herdsman, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because it strove with him. And they dig about they dig in another well and they strive for that also and call the name of it Thetna. And remove from thence and dig in another well and for that they strove not that they call the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. He went up from thence to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bless thee, and multiply thine seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and preached his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dig the well. Genesis 26. 12 to 25. The cylinder feature for Isaac's life is that it has no cylinder feature. He lived out his 180 years in quiet and with little to make history. A few details of his story are given, and some of these are not very credible. He seems never to have wandered far from the neighborhood of Beersheba. This quiet, Rolling stretches of thinny people land contented him and gave pasture for his flocks, as well as fields for his cultivation. Like many of the tribes of his land district still, he had passed from the purely Norman to the pastoral life, such as Abraham led, and had begun to sow in that land. Denmark's stays in progress, his father's life has been like a Mini summer day with a burst of a splendor, a heavy thunder clouds. His was like a, a calm day in autumn, windless and unchanging from morning to a serene evening. The world thinks little of such lives, but they are fruitful. Our test begins with a sweet little picture for peaceful industry, blessed by God, therefore prospering. Travelers tell us that the land where Isaac dwelt is still marvelously fertile, even to rude farming. But to be merely a successful farmer, the sheep owner might have seen the poor work to the ear of such glowing promises, and the prospect of a high destiny often disgusts his processor 
with the lowly duties. But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we, with the patience, wait for it. And the best way to fit ourselves for great things in the future is to bend our best, the wheels, to humble toil, in the present. Peter expected every day to see the risen Lord when he said, "I'm go f- a fishing." The Philistines' envy was a very natural, since Isaiah was was alien, in some sense an intruder. Their stopping of the wells was a common act for hostility and、uh, effectual one in that land where everything lives, where water comes, and dies if it is cut off. Abimelech's reason for extraditing extraditing Isaac might have provoked a more pugnacious person to stay and defy the Philistine to expel him. Thou art much mightier than we. And、so he could have said, "Try to put me out." Then, the result might have been that Abimelech and his Philistines would have been the ones to go. But the same spirit was in the man as had been in the land, when he led his father. He led his father, bound him, and laid him on the altar without a struggle, on a word, and he quietly went, leaving his fields, pastures. Worry, poor, spirited, says the world. What does Christ say?、Mm. Isaac was not original. He cleaned out the wells which his father did. Of the filial piety, gave them again the old names which his father had called them. Some of us nowadays get a credit for being at once the liberal thinkers because. Regard our fathers' wells as much too short, with the rubbish to be worth clearing out. The last thing we should dream of would be revise the old names. But the old wells were not enough for the new time. The so refresh, so fresh ones were ended. As their good servants did not say, "We will have no water." What is drawn from Abraham's well? What was enough for him, is enough for us. So, like all wise men, they were conservatively progressive, and progressively conservative. I like that. <laughs> That's beautiful, huh?、Yeah. The Gira shepherds were sharp lawyers. They took strong ground in saying, "The water is ours." They dug wells, but we are ground owners. What is below the surface, what is as what is on it, is our property. Again, Isaac filled it, moved on a little way, and tried again. The second well was claimed, gave it up. All that Isaac did was to name the two, contention, and enmity, as a gentle rebuke, as a gentle rebuke and a memorial. So, as it generally is result, gentleness, weird. Violence out. As the Philistine tired of annoying before, Isaiah tired of yielding, so he came to a quiet harbor at last. And the trees is a repose to God, naming his last well, broad places. Because the Lord, had made room for him. Contention, enmity, broad places.、Mm. Such a quiet spirit, strong in no non-resistance, ready to yield rather than quarrel, was strangely out of place in this wild day's lands. He obeyed the sermon on the mount many times before it was spoken, whether from temperament or from faith. Is the first instance of the Christian type of excellency in the Old Testament. There ought to be no question that the spirit of meekness, which will not meet violence by violence, is a Christian spirit. Christian morals alter the perspective of moral excellences and exalt meekness above the heroic virtues admired by the world. The violets and lilies in Christ's garden are to shine 
voluptuous roses, the floating sunflowers. In this day, when there is a recrudescence, recrudescence. What's the word? How to pronounce that word? Recrudescence. Okay, recrudescence of militarism. Militarism. And we attempted to colonize the soldier. In the modern era, to insist that the highest type, the Lamb of God, who was a shape before her shearers, to fight for my rights is not a Christian ideal. Nor is it the best way to secure them. As he will generally wear out the Philistines and get his will, and the last, they will have escaped much friction. And many evil passions. Is that wise or not? Huh? That's a century ago. <laughs> Still it's true today. Till safer being meek than fears. That's the time you know. T. R. Roosevelt was a leader for progressive movement in America. This is boring, you know. So yeah. Isaac won the friendship. As the opponents, by his patience, the verses out of the text tell. Their consciences, the hearts, were touched. It is so plainly that the Lord was with him and sued him for alliance. It's better to turn enemies into friends and to beat them and have them as enemies still. I'll knock you down unless you love me. Does not sound a very hopeful way for. Cementing peaceful relations, but when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. But as it were more than the Philistines of favor by his meek peacefulness, for the Lord appeared unto him, assured him that undefended and unresisting as he was, he had a strong defense and need not be afraid. Fear not, for I am with thee. The ornament of meek, quiet spirit is in the sight of God of a great price. It is not only for the woman that brings the wisdom of God, the assurances of tranquil safety to him who cherishes it. The spirit of God comes down in the likeness of a dove, and that bird peace sits brooding only on the charmed way. Of a heart stilled from strife and wrath, like a quiet summer's sea. What a beautiful picture! Isaac's new home, and Bathsheba, having been thus hallowed by the appearance of the Lord, was consecrated by the building of an altar. We should hallow, by grateful remembrance, the spots where God had made Himself known to us. The best beginning of. A new undertaking is to rear an altar. As well, when new settlers begin the work by calling on the name of the Lord, Bathsheba and the Palamoth rock on a pier. First comes the altar, then the tent can be trustfully pitched. But it says the Lord build the house our labor, ye win that build it. If the house is built in faith, a well. Will not be lacking. For they who seek first the kingdom of God, will have all needful things added unto them. I can continue reading. Okay, we're going to read the three portions. Is that okay for you? So yeah.、Mm -hmm. The heavenly pathway and the earthly heart. Wow! Fast forward to Jacob's life now. So okay. So that's interesting. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran and lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. He took of the stones and place to put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, the land was set up on the earth, and top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God. Of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereupon whereon thy lightest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. 
And thy city shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the family of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places of whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. But I will not leave with thee till I have done that which I have spoken to thee, love. And Jacob wake him out of his sleep, this he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place. This is not other, but the house of God. And this is gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set it up for the pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. He called the name that place Bethel. But the name that city was called Luz, and the first, and Jacob walled of all, saying, If God will be with, thee, with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for the pillar shall be God's house, and of all thine all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenths to thee. Genesis 28, 10 to 22. From Abraham to Jacob is a great descent. The former embodies the nobler side of the Jewish character, its capacity for religious ideas, its elevation above, and separation from the nations. Its consciousness of the peaceful satisfaction in a divine friend is consequent to occasion in the world. This all were deep in the founder of the race and flowed it from him. Jacob, on the other hand, had in him the more ignoble qualities which Christian treatment of Jews has fostered, which have become indissolubly attached to the name in popular usage. He's a crafty schemer, selfish, Overreaching with the king lie to the main chance. Whoever deals with him had to look sharply after his own interests. Self advantage is in its own most earthly form, is uppermost in him, like all timid, selfish men, shifty ways, and evasions as natural weapons. Great interest of his history lies in the slow progress by which the patient God purified him. And out of this stone raised up a worthy child to Abraham. We see in this context the first step in his education and the very imperfect degree in which he profited by it. One, consider the wages is a companying promise. Jack had fled from home on account of his nobler brothers of fierce wrath and the trick which their scheming mother, he, and contrived. It was an ugly, heartless fraud, a crime against a doubting father, as against Esau. Rebecca gets alarmed for her favorite and her fertile brain. <laughs> He's upon another device, a blind Isaac, to get Jacob out of harm's way. In the excuse that she cannot bear his marriage with a heat high moment. Her exaggerated expressions of passion and dislike to the daughters for his have no religious basis. They are partly friend and partly petulance. So the poor blind father is beguiled once more and sends his son away, studying under such auspices and coming from such an atmosphere and journeying back to Haran, the hole of the pit whence Abraham had been digged, and turn his back on the land where God has been with his horse. The wanderer was not likely to be cherishing any lofty thoughts. His life was in danger. He was alone. A dim future was before him. Pampers' conscience was not very comfortable. These things would be in his mind. He lay down the gaze into the Wallet sky so far above him, burning with all its stars, weary with a head full of sordid cares, plans to possibly fears, slept. 
and then there flamed upon that inward eye, which is the blissful solitude to the pure, and is terror to the evil, this vision, which speak indeed to his, to his then need, and he discern it, but reveal to him to us the truth which ennobles all life, burns up the dross of a earth war turns aims and the selfish, crafty ways. We are to conceal for the form of the vision as a broad stair or sloping ascent, rather than the land, reaching right from the sleeper's side to the far-off heaven. Its path we peopled with messengers, and its summit, touching the place where a glory shone that paled even the lustrous constellations than the pure sky. Jeff Kand saw himself alone. The vision peoples the wilderness. He hand felt himself defenseless. The vision mastered the army for his safety. He had been groveling on earth with no thought beyond his fleeting goods. The vision lifted his eyes from the lowly level, the low level on which he had been gazing. He had been conscious of but little connection with heaven. The vision showed him a path from his worst side right into his depths. And probably thought that he was leaving the presence of the father God when left the father tent. The vision burned with his astonished heart. The consciousness is God at the there, in the solitude, at the night. The divine promise is the best commentary on the meaning of the vision. The familiar, essential promise is repeated to him. The blessing at the birthright is confirmed. In addition, special assurances translation the vision into words and that to his then wants are given. God's presence in his wanderings, his protection, checks the return to the land, and the promise of God's persistent presence, working through all paradoxes of providence and a sense of his servant, and incapable of staying his operations, or satisfying God's heart, or vindicating his faithful his faithfulness. At any point short of a complete accomplishment, was applied to the word. We pass from the long desert of the mysterious twin light of Genesis to the beating waves between Galilee and Jordan, and to the clear historical daylight of the gospel, and we hear Christ renewing the promise to the crafty Jacob, to the crafty Jacob, to the one whom he called the son of Jacob in his after better days. At Israel, indeed, in whom is no guile. Oh, talking about Nathaniel now. The very heart of Christ's life work was unveiled in the terms of this vision. From henceforth, ye shall see the heaven opened, the angels of God descending, descending upon the Son of Man. So then, the fleeting vision was a transient revelation of a permanent reality and a faint foreshadowing. That the true communication between heaven and the earth. Jesus Christ is a lander between God and man. On him all divine gifts descend, by him all the angels of human devotion, consecration, and aspiration go up. There's a flat earth, but not so far from the topmost heaven as a sense thinks. The despairing question of a Jewish wisdom who has ascended up into heaven? Or descended, who is his name? What is his son's name? If a Tahan can tell, which has likewise been the question for every age, that has not been altogether sunk in sensual delights, is answered once for all in the incarnate and crucified ascended Lord, by and in whom all heaven has stooped to earth, that earth. Might be lifted up to heaven. Every child of man, though lonely and earthly, has a lander full his side, like the sunbeam, which comes straight into the eyes of every gazer, wherever he stands. It becomes increasingly evident in the controversies of those days, these days, that there will remain for modern thought only alternative: either Jesus Christ, the means of communication between God and man. Or there is no communication. Deism, theism, and compromisers, and cannot live. 
the cultivated world in both hemisphere is being more and more shut up to either setting Christ as a revealer, by whom alone we know, or as a medium by whom alone we love and approach God, or seeking to a base for negations where chalk dam will stifle enthusiasm and poetry as well as a devotion and immortal hope. Jeff's vision was meant to teach him and meant to teach us the nearness of God and the sweet directness of a communication whereby his help comes to us and our desires rise to him. These and their kinder truths were to be to him and should be to us the parents of much nobleness. Here is the secret of elevation of aim and the thought about the mean things of a sense, the old, and especially the young, in whose wings the blonde dances and to whom life is in all its glory and freshness, are tempted to think of it as all. Okay, do you hear that? Huh? Young man? <laughs> I'm joking with you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you talk about the young, <clears throat> especially the young. Said, mm -hmm. mm. do 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 you recognize that he's talking about you, basically? So. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> it does us good to have this vision of the internal reality, the blazing in upon us, even if it is seen to glare at us rather than to shine with lambent light. What the word lambent means? I have no idea. Let me check. Lambent. Uh, glowing, gleaming, flickering with soft radiance. Okay. The scenes about the thin wheel of the unseen, worth which we are to add, too apt to make a workshop or a mere garden for pleasure, is a bathal, a horse of God. Everywhere the land stands, everywhere the angel goes up the dam, everywhere the face looks from the top. Nothing will save life from becoming sooner or later trivial, monotonous, and infinitely wearisome, but the continual vision of the present God, and the continual experience of the swift ascent and descent of our aspirations and its blessings. It's a secret of purity too. How could Jack but indulge in the craft of the fall his uh, conscience with the sin as long as he carries the memory of what he had seen in the solitary night on the uplands of Bethel? The direct result of the vision is the same command as Abraham received, Walk before me and be thy perfect. Realize my presence and then kill the motions of sin and quicken to service. It's also the secret of peace, hopes and fears, and dim uncertainties of the future. No doubt, as it is the sleeper's mind as they lay him down, his independent life was a beginning, has was a beginning, and he just left his father's tent for the first time. And not youth in years, he was in the position which youth holds with us. So to him and to all young persons, he has shown the charm which will, keep, will, which will keep the heart calm, preserve us from being over execrate to cast the fashion of uncertain evils, and to eagerly longing for possible good. I am, we say, should be enough to steady our souls, and the confidence in God will will not leave us until he had accomplished his own purpose for us, should make us willing to let him do as he wills, he will with ours. Wow, well, I want you to read on, so we're going to finish this portion then, so. Okay. <clears throat> Number two. Notice the imperfect reception of the divine teaching. Jacob's startled exclamation on awakening from his dream indicates a very low level both of religious knowledge and feeling. Nor is there any reason for taking the words in, I'm sorry, nor is there any reason for taking the words in any but their most natural sense. For it is a mistake to ascribe to him the knowledge of God 
due to later revelation, or at this stage of his life, any depth of religious emotion. Hmm. He is alarmed at the thought that God is near. Probably he had been accustomed to think of God's presence as in some special way associated with his father's encampment. It had not risen to the belief of his omnipresence. There seems no joyous leaping up of his heart at the thought that God is here. Dread, not unmingled with the superstitious fear that he had profaned a holy place by laying himself down in it, is his prevailing feeling. And he pleads ignorance as the excuse for his sacrilege. He does not draw the conclusion from the vision that all the earth is hallowed by a near God, but only that he has unwittingly stumbled on his house. And he does not learn that from every place there is an open door with loving heart into the calm depths where God is thrown, but only that here he unwittingly stands at the gate of heaven. Uh. So he misses the very inner purpose of the vision and rather shrinks from it and then welcomes it. <laughs> what was, sorry, was that spasm of fear all that passed through his mind that night? Did he sleep again when the glory died out of the heaven? So the story would appear to, to suggest. But in any case, we see here the effect of the sudden blazing in upon a heart not yet familiar with the divine friend of the conviction that he really is, that is, Sorry. <laughs> of the conviction that he is really near. Mm -hmm. Gracious as God's promise was, it did not dissipate the creeping awe at his presence. It is an eloquent testimony of man's consciousness of sin, that whensoever a present God becomes a reality to a worldly man, he trembles. This place would not be dreadful but blessed if it were not for the sense of discord between God and me. Mm. The morning light brought other thoughts, when it filled the silent heavens, and where the ladder had stretched, there was but empty blue. And you believe that that almost like a similar setting. Abraham gets to mm. heaven, you know, and God come to talk to him, making sense to you, you know. So yeah. yeah. Mm. Go ahead. The lesson is sinking into his mind. He lifts the rude stone and pours oil on it as a symbol of consecration, as nameless races have done all over the world. His vow shows that he had but begun to learn of learn in God's school. Hmm. He hedges about his promise with the punctilious repetition of God's undertaking, as if resolved that there should be no mistake. Clause by clause, he goes over it all and puts an if to it. Hmm. God's word should have kindled something like your faith than that. What a fall from Abram believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. This guy is a bargain. <laughs> so, this guy's what? A bargain. Right? He bargained with God. You know, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. If we do this, you do this, you do this. Dang! You know, so. <laughs> yep. Jacob barely believed and will wait to see whether it will, whether all will turn out as it had been promised. Mm. That is not the glad, swift response of a loving, trusting heart. Nor is he contented with, the, with repeating to God the terms of his engagement, but he adds a couple of clauses which strike him as being important and as having been omitted. There was nothing about bread to eat and raiment to put on, nor about coming back again in peace. So he adds these. A true Jew, great at a bargain, and determined to get all he can, and have no mistake about what he must get before he gives anything. <laughs> Sorry, Rudy. <laughs> okay. Was Jesus thinking at all of the ancestor when he warned the descendants mm. in words which sound curiously like an echo of Jacob's, not to be anxious what ye shall so, eat, yeah. nor what ye shall put on? Is that amazing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. As the vow stands in the authorized version, oh. it is farther open to the charge of suspending his worship of God upon the fulfillment of these conditions. Mm. But it is better to adopt the marginal rendering of the revised version, according to which the clause, then shall the Lord be my God, is a part of the conditions, not mm. of the vow. Mm. It is to be read, and if the Lord will be, then this stone shall be, etc. <laughs> if crazy. this rendering be adopted, that's as really I think it should crazy. Be, yeah, thinking about this. Yes. A young the believer, vow, you know. Come to God with a lot of uncertainties, you know. So yeah, re remind me a lot about myself. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> without the Bible, without any guidance, uh, and God talked to me, you know, I asked God for certain things. <laughs> Teachers, <laughs> you know, so. yeah. I remember God told me, I will always put a roof on your top. I will not have anybody touch uh, touch you, basically, you know, hurt you. And it's turned out so true, you know, so, you know. A fist guns, knives, people try to harm me, you know, so. And yeah. uh, it never happened, so, interesting. Mm. Mm. He's, he's, he's good, you know, so. Yeah. We are dumb, we just don't aware. <laughs> he's keeping eye, you know, so. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. If this rendering be adopted, as I think it should be, the vow proper is simply of outward service. Mm. He will rear an altar, and he will tithe his substance. Mm -hmm. Not a very munific munificent pledge. And where in it is the surrender of the heart? Where is the outgoing of love and gratitude? Mm. Where the clasping of the hand of, this, of his heavenly friend with calm rapture of thankful self-yielding? And steadfastness of implicit trust. Mm, yielding. The word is yielding. It's my true yielding. Mm. Yielded spirit. That's all God wants. is a yielded spirit. <laughs> mm. God did not want Jacob's altar, nor his tents. He wanted Jacob. But many a weary year and many a sore sorrow have to leave their marks on him before the evil strain is pressed out of his blood. By the unwary long suffering of his patient friend and teacher in heaven, the crafty earthly minded Jacob, the supplanter, is turned into Israel, the prince with God in whom is no God. Hmm. The slower the scholar, the more wonderful the forbearance of the teacher. And the more may we, who are slow scholars too, hmm. take heart to believe that he will not be soon angry with us, nor hmm. leave us until he has done that which he has spoken to us of. What a beautiful thing. Well, let's see which next portion, how long it is. We still have 15 minutes. Do it. Yeah, we think so. Yeah, let's read that on. Read on. Yeah. Okay. Mahanaim, the two camps. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Mm. In other words, two camps. Mm. So I ye, you pronounce it, or speak it as in other words, that's what it means? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, it is a Latin expression, but the Latin expression translates into what English. is like in other words. In yeah. other words, I, -E. okay. So, mm. I always, I always thought it's, it's for example, so I'm deadly wrong there. So. Example is E-G. Oh, E-G, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was Genesis 32, verse 1 and 2. Mm. This vision came at a crisis in Jacob's life. He had just left the house of Laban, his father-in-law, years, and in company with a long caravan, consisting of wives, children, servants, and all his wealth turned into cattle. Mm. Is, journeying, is journeying back again to Palestine. His road leads him close to close by the country of Esau. Jacob was no soldier, and he is naturally terrified to meet his justly incensed brother. And so as he plods along with his defenseless company trailing behind him, as you may see the Arab caravan streaming over the same uplands today, all at once, in the middle of his march, a bright harnessed army of angels meets him. Whether visible to the eye of sense, or as would appear only to the eye of faith, they are visible to his troubled man, and in a glow of confident joy, he calls the name of that place Mahanaim. Mahanaim. <laughs> one camp was the little one of his down here. Man, I, I always have a little bit of trouble with the way he writes things. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I want to read down. Is that okay for you? I like to read. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's disruptive. Sorry. <laughs> One camp with the little one of his down here, the little one of his down here, with the helpless women, children, his own frightened, defenseless self, with the other, with the greed one up there, rather in shadowy but the most real spiritual presence around about him, as a bodyguard, mark making 
an impregnable wall between him and every foe. The same thing happened later days I can think about when the Egyptians pursued Israelites, am I? In the time of Moses, there was a fire and a I think there are angels there, you know, angels of fire were sitting us so, and uh, made a camp with God's people. It is the same story continues that the Lord said, I will send my angel ahead of you, making sense to you, you know, so yeah, so two camps. Sorry to break the reading, but uh, it's good to um, call yeah. some rem- uh, semblances there, so anyway. We may take some very plain and everlasting true lessons after this story. First, one first, the angels of God meet us on the dusty road of a common life. Jacob went down his way and the angels of God met him. As he was tramping along there over the lonely fields of Edom with many a thought on his mind and many a fear and his heart, but the feeling there is a path that I have to walk on. When at once the ear was filled with the soft rustle of angel wings, and the brightness from the flashing armor of the heavenly hosts flamed across his unexpecting eye. And so it is evermore the true place for us to receive visions of God is in the path of the homely, prosaic duties which he lays upon us. The dusty road is far more likely to be trodden by angel feet than we mount the summit of the mountain where we sometimes would fain go. And many hours, consecrated to devotion, has less of the manifest presence of God that is granted to some weary heart. Weary heart is a commonplace struggle with the little troubles and trials of daily life. This makes the doors, as it were, by which the visitants draw near to us. It is a common duty to the narrow round, the narrow round, the daily task, that not only give us all we all to ask, but are the selected means and channels by which ever God's visitants draw near to us. The man that has, ever, has never seen an angel standing beside him and driving his loom for him or helping him at his counter and his desk, as a woman that has never seen an angel, according to the bold realism, the homely vision of the old German picture working with her in the kitchen and preparing the meal for the household, a little chance of meeting such visitants at any other point of their experience or event of their lives. If the weak be empty of the angels, you will never catch a sight of feather for the winds. On the Sunday, if we do not recognize his presence in the midst of all the prose and the commonplace, and the vulgarity and the triviality and the mon- mono- monotony, the dust of the small duties, we shall go up to the summit of the Sinai itself and see nothing there but the cold gray stone with everlasting snows. That they heard a comment some made said, you know, to Jesus was not too sure now, or to Paul, rather, you know, God speaking to him and to Paul, am right? To others, this is heard a thunder, am right? He seemed by Paul, they cannot discern the words of the Lord, basically. Is that interesting? Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then, another side, the same thought is this that it, it is in the path where God has bade us walk. And we shall find the angels around us. We meet them, indeed, on paths our own choosing, but it will be the sort of angel that the Balaam met, with a sword in his hand, mighty and beautiful, but a ransful too. We had better not from him. But the friendly helpers, the emissaries of God's love, the apostles of his grace, do not harm the road that we make for ourselves. They confine themselves rigidly to the paths in which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. A man has no right to expect that he will not get blessing and help the divine gifts when self-willedly 
It had taken a bit between his teeth. It had chosen his own road in the world. But if he will say, Lord, here I am, put me where thou wilt, and do with me what thou wilt, that he may be sure that his own path, that it may be solitary of a human companionship uh, leading up almost uh, uh, among the uh, barren rocks the over bare moorland, moorlands, for the sun beats down fiercely, will not be unvisited by a better presence, so that in sweet consciousness's sufficiency for rich grace, he will be able to say, I, being the way, the Lord meet me, met me. Two, still further, we may draw upon, we draw from this incident the lesson that God's angel meet us punctually at the hour of need. Jack is drawing nearer and nearer to his fear every step. He is now just on the broad borders of Esau's country and close upon opening communication with his brother. And then the critical moment, this is before the finger of the clock has reached the point on the dial at which the bell will strike, the needed help comes. The angel guards is drawing near and the camp beside him. It is always so. The Lord shall help her, and then right early. His hopes come no sooner and no later than we need. It appeared before we have realized our danger, our defenselessness, our hearts will not leap up at the coming, as the men in a bleaker tongue do when the guns of the relieving force are heard booming from afar. Often, God's delays seem to us inexplicable, and our prayer to have no more effect than it was spoken to a sleeping bile. But such delays are merciful. They help us to the consciousness of our need. They let us feel the presence of the sorrow. They give opportunity of proving the weakness of all other supports. They test and increase desire for his help. They throw us more unreservedly into his arms. They fall room for the sorrow, all the burden, to work his peaceful fruits. So, in many other ways, Delay for succor, feeds us to receive succor, and our God make no tearing, but for our sins. It is His way that has come almost to the edge of the precipice, and then in the very night of time, when another minute we are over, she should shut His strong right hand and save us. So Peter is left in prison, the prayer is going up unceasingly for him. And no answer comes. The days pass over and faith slipped away and still he is in prison. And prayers does nothing for him. The last day of his life, according to Herod's purpose, done that all the day the church lift up his voice. But apparently there is no answer, no any than regarded. The night comes, and still the wind cry goes up. The heavens seem deaf or apathetic, apathetic, apathetic. The night wears on and still no help comes, but in the last watch, the last night, it is almost dawning, nearly the last minute. When escape would have been possible, the angel touched the sleeping puzzle with a leisurely calmness, sure that he has ample time, lead him out to freedom the safety. Wow, that's a beautiful. It was precisely because Jesus allowed the household of Beth- Bethany that I've received the sister message, he abode still for two days in the same place where he was. Where our impatience may wander, and our faithless venture sometimes almost to rebuke him when he comes. With the words like Mary and Martha, I said, Lord, if thou hadst been here, such as such sorrows would not have happened. And thou could so easily have been here. We should learn the lesson. And if we, if we had delayed, so long as the dreaded blow has fallen, has it come soon enough to make it the occasion when the still more glorious communication is the power. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, and it shall give thee 
the design of the heart. The, um, yesterday, uh, last evening, in the sister meeting, we read a psalm called "Be still, know that I'm God." Is that amazing? You know, so you know, please said, "But God will give you all that He treasures." Basically, paraphrasing it to those patiently wait on Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, can you continue there? Finish it. Yeah. Number three. Again, we learn from this incident that the angels of God come in the shape which we need. Jacob's want at the moment was protection. Therefore, the angels appear in warlike guise and present before the defenseless man another camp in which, in which he and his unwieldy caravan of women and children and cattle may find security. If his special want had been of some blessing of another kind, no doubt another form of appearance suited with precision to his need would have been imposed upon these angel helpers. For God's gifts to us change their character. As the rabbis fabled that the manna tasted to each man what each most desired. <laughs> the same pure heavenly bread. It tastes like honey in your mouth. So melted yeah. And melted with no trace almost. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful taste. Amen. I eat some in my dream. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. so. mm -hmm. Go ahead. The same pure heavenly bread as the varying savor that commends it to varying palates. God's grace is protean. It takes all the forms that man's necessities require. What the word protean means, I don't know why even... Why to capitalize uh, it, by the way? Mm -hmm. I guess... A sort of organism that can change into different forms, it says here. Oh, ever changing, versatile, okay. It's kind of a literary word. Oh. It's actually so related to, to a god or something. Greek philosophical. Yeah. Proteus. Prophetic of sea god. God erosion in the body water. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. As water assumes the shape of any vessel into which it is put, so this great blessing comes to each of us, molded according to the pressure and taking the form of our circumstances and necessities. His fullness is all sufficient. It is the same blood that passing to all the members ministers to each according to the needs and fashion of each. And it is the same grace which passing to our souls, and each man is shaped according to his present condition and ministers to his present wants. Mm -hmm. So, dear brethren, in that great fullness, each of us may have the thing that we need. The angel, who to one man is protection, to another shall be teaching and inspiration. To another shall appear with chariots of fire and horses of fire, to sweep the rap soul heavenward. To another shall draw near as the, a deliverer from his fetters, at whose touch the bonds shall fall from off him. To another shall appear as the instructor in duty and the pointer of a path of service, like that vision that shone in the castle to the Apostle Paul, and said, Thou must bear witness for me at Rome. To another shall appear as opening the door of heaven, letting a flood of light come down upon his darkened heart, as to the ap apocalyptic seer in his rocky fetters. And all this worketh the one and the selfsame Lord of angels, dividing to every man severally as he will hmm. and as the man needs the defenseless jacob has the manifestation of the divine presence in the guise of armed warriors that guard his unwarlike camp hmm. Hmm. i add one last word hmm. long centuries after jacob's experience at mahanaim another trembling fugitive found himself there fearful like jacob hmm. of the vengeance and anger of one who was knit to him by blood hmm. When poor King David was flying from the face of Absalom, his son, hmm. the first place where he made his stand and where he remained during the whole of the rebellion wow. was this town of Mahanaim, wow. away on the eastern side of the Jordan. Hmm. Do you not think that to the kingly exile and his feebleness and his fear, the very name of this resting place would be an omen? Hmm. Would, not, would he not recall the old story and to think himself of how round 
that other frightened man, mm. bright harnessed angel stood and poured her serviceable. Mm. And would he not, as he looked on his little band of friends, faithful mm. among the faithless, mm. have his eyesight cleared to behold the other camp? <laughs> Such a vision, no doubt, inspired the calm confidence of the psalm, which evidently belongs to that dark er hour of his life, and made it possible for the haunted, for the hunted king, with his feeble band, to sing even then, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, mm. for thou, Lord, makest me dwell in safety, solitary though I am. Mm. Nor is the vision emptied of its power to stay and make brave by all the ages that have passed. The vision was for a moment. The fact is forever. Mm. The sun's rays was flashed back from celestial armor. The next all unreflected shone on the lonely wastes of the desert. But the host of God was there still. The transitory appearance of the permanent realities is a revelation to us as truly as to the patriarch. Mm. And though no angel wings may winnow the air around our road, mm. nor any sordid seraphim be seen on our commonplace march, <laughs> we too have all the armies of heaven with us. Amen. We tread the path which God has marked out. Yes. And in our weakness and trembling, commit ourselves to him. Yes, Lord. The heavenly warriors die not mm. and hover around us today, mm. excelling in the strength of their immortal youth, mm. and thus ready to succor us as they were all those centuries ago mm. to guard the solitary Jacob. Mm. Better still, the captain of the Lord's host has come up to be our defense, and our faith is, has not only to behold the many ministering spirits sent forth to minister to us, mm. but one mightier than they, mm. whose commands they all obey. <laughs> And who himself is the companion of our solitude, Man. the shield of our defenselessness. Thank you, Lord. Mm. It was blessed that Jacob should be met by the an many angels of God. Mm. It is infinitely more blessed that the angel of the Lord, mm. the one who is more than the many, encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. Mm. Them. Yes. Uh, the postscript of the last letter, which Gordon sent from Khartoum, closed with the words, The hosts are with me, Mahanaim. Mm. Were they not, even though death was near? Mm. Was that sublime faith a mistake, mm. the vision, an optical delusion? Mm -hmm. No, for their ranks are arrayed around God's children mm. to keep them from all evil while he wills that they should live. Mm. And their chariots of fire and horses of fire are sent to bear them to heaven when he wills that they should die. Mm. That's beautiful. This is such a wonderful um, expositor, you know, scholarship, solid. But more importantly, such a devotion to God, in-depth understanding of the scriptures, beautiful. No, I can wrap it as in prayer, bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, I do pray that our, our, our trust and our faith in you would be one, uh, Lord, that is, is, unshaken father mm. but despite any circumstance that we may find ourselves in in this life or despite any inner uh state lord within our own minds and hearts mm. or that we would always be um find ourselves firmly rooted in mm. in you father mm. but that we would um live out this trust and this faith in our obedience to you mm. lord in the state of our uh, our spirits before you, mm. Lord, in um, the consciousness of your Holy Spirit within us, Lord, which you have uh, you have given to us through your Son, Lord, the Spirit of Truth, mm. Lord, that would uh, that would lead us, Lord, more than comfort us, Lord, but mm. truly would show us the way, mm. Lord, in the truth, and Lord, that in this we would have um, a confidence that, Lord, surpasses any that can be found in uh in anything of this world amen lord in any uh any assurance or insurance that this world mm. can offer lord, <laughs> i like this mm. none of it lord is uh eternal as you are amen and lord may we mm. we rather find our our confidence or even our boldness mm. lord through you lord mm. in christ mm. and lord uh that we in this in this way would have um, the hope of glory mm. Lord the, the hope of the, the fulfillment of your purposes Lord 
uh, about us and mm. even in and through us. Mm. Lord, that um, what you say, Lord, and what you will mm. indeed will be done. Amen. Lord, may we find uh, yeah. this, uh, this sense of um, more than safety, Lord, but um, yes, Lord. Uh, this sense again, Lord, and the desire of your heart. Man. Lord, how nothing can stop that. <laughs> Pray yes. this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Noah.